Welcome back everyone as we sit here and uh, talk to Commander Jeff Gray about an exciting new project that will be coming to Navy Pier. It will be the Naval Memorial and also I have to add this, you're including a spot for the Marines in there, right? Of course, this represents <laughs> all of the Naval services. All of the Naval services. And the Naval services, for those who don't know, it consists of the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard, and the Merchant Marine. Ah, that, that, that's good. Jeff, if you could continue uh, about your, your project and what it would consist of. Well, so the, the memorial itself, there's going to be a couple of key elements. One is uh, we're actually going to have a replica of the USS Wolverine uh, built. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be built by a shipbuilding company up in Wisconsin. And what's, inter what, what's interesting about the, the Wisconsin shipbuilder, that shipbuilder was one of the only companies in the Midwest that built submarines uh, for World War II. Wow. And th th just that story itself is so did those, fascinating. Did those submarines come up the Chicago River? That's, uh, that, that's a big part of the story. So they, they built them up in Wisconsin, floated them out onto Lake Michigan. They did all the testing and trials out there. And then when they were ready, they floated them down here to Chicago. They got on the river. They went from the Chicago, floated down um, from, through the Chicago River to the Mississippi and down to the Gulf. I'm impressed. I, um, and the Wolverine was an aircraft carrier, right? So, yes, the Wolverine was one of two right. training aircraft carriers that were built specifically to train 18,000 um, Marine and Navy pilots to go fight in the in the Pacific during World War II. And those were the only aircraft carriers that had ever been on a lake. Correct. Right, correct. Here fresh in, water. Fresh, fresh water lake, Lake, lake Michigan. Okay, I still know my history. Go, go ahead. So uh, that, that the, the ship itself is going to be the key element of uh, our memorial. Uh, we will also have a, a, a nice walkway. Uh, through that walkway, we'll, have, we'll be able to tell some stories about the history of, of the sea services here mm -hmm. in the Chicagoland area. Um, we'll have a, a row of um, etched uh, glass panels um, where those stories will be told in pictures. Mm -hmm. um, and what we, what, what we want to do is also tell family stories because there are some distinguished uh, families yeah. whose uh, naval service uh, is just it, it's just mind blowing. If you could, you could talk about a few of those folks. Yes. So, uh, for example, uh, m many people don't know that uh, John F. Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy, uh, did his initial officer training here in Chicago. He was uh, part of the officers candidate program at Northwestern. Northwestern, right? Now. Okay. Uh, and they they did the training down at Abbott Hall, right off Lakeshore Drive. Wow. Uh, you, we also have uh, pre former uh, President uh, George Herbert Walker Bush. He did his flight uh, training off the Sable. The Sable is the other, the other air, aircraft, aircraft carrier. Yeah. Uh, he did his carrier calls, came here to um, the Chicago area, out at Glenview Naval Air Station, which no longer exists. But uh, from there, he did his uh, uh, carrier qualifications. There's another family, uh, the Rickover family. Hyman Rickover, Very interesting. Uh, it, it, that is like a fascinating story. Uh, by the way, uh, in Chicago Public Schools, uh, we have a, uh, a high school in, uh, named after uh, Admiral Rickover. Admiral Rickover was the, uh, the godfather of the nuclear Navy. He changed Navy history, the trajectory of Navy strategy all around yeah. nuclear power. And how long was propulsion? How long was he in the military? He was uh, he was the longest serving uh, military person, sixty three years. Incredible. Keep keep going, kind if you don't mind with these people. I find it uh, so. Uh, also, part of that history, we had um, the Golden Thirteen. The Golden Thirteen were the first Af uh, African American uh, officers in the Navy ever. The Navy uh, for the longest time. If blacks wanted to serve, uh, they typically serve as uh, messmen, uh, cooks, uh, just domestics yeah, for right. the officers. Uh -huh. 
and um, the Navy decided, you know, in the uh, during World War II that they had to have a more integrated force, and the first um, uh, naval off black naval yeah. officers, they said, all right, we're gonna we're gonna hand select these folks. Uh, we're going to train them. They did their training up at Naval Station Great Lakes. And what's very fascinating is that four out of that 13 were from Chicago. From Chicago, yeah. Uh, and, and afterwards, uh, one of them was, became a, a, um, a juvenile judge here, longtime juvenile Who was judge. That? that was uh, Sylvester White, Judge Sylvester, Sylvester White. White. Okay. Right. So. Um. I let me ask about one. I have to bring up uh, a naval fellow that's down the road from his building is down the road from uh, Navy Pier, George Hallis. George, oh, absolutely. Uh, another fascinating story. Uh, George Hallis served both in World War One and World War Two, um, and he served on the reserve side all the way up until like the the sixties. Um, and, then, I and, then he, and then he just retired. And, and I, I think what, what should be said about Hallis, and so people know this, when World War II, he could have gotten out, be, gotten out of it because of prior service, age, and the fact he was a multimillionaire. But he still went and he re-enlisted in the Navy. He's, he's quite a story. Quite yeah, so, so he re-enlisted, uh, uh, got back in uh, as a lieutenant commander, he went to the Pacific and he worked on Admiral Nimitz's staff. He ran all of the recreational programming wow. uh, for the servicemen in the in the Pacific Theater. Um, he would go around organizing um, events, and that you know that comes through from his sports background. I think the other thing about Hallis is I forgot one other item about him: his age. I, I think he was forty-five. I know, over, I, I'm not sure he was an older guy. Yes, he was an older. Uh, well, so that goes to another story. Um, uh, what uh, what's his name? Douglas, uh, oh, former alder. Paul, Paul, Paul Douglas. Douglas. Yeah, Paul, Paul Douglas. Well, Paul Douglas uh, decided he was going to leave the city council. He was an alderman. He was an alderman and a and a U.S. senator. But at the time, he was an alderman. He was 50 years old. 50 years old. And he wanted to serve, and he joined the Marines. Joined the Marines. People find it hard. And, to and he passed their physical, physical fitness. Physical fitness. I, I think what everyone forgets about this is what helped him, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is he knew Frank Knox, the yes. Secretary of the Navy, who had worked in Chicago, and he was able to get a waiver. In yes, uh, Frank, Knox, Frank Knox, from, also from Chicago. He ran the Navy so, during World War II. Uh, he, he was here in Chicago. He was the publisher of the, what, I think, the precursor to the Sun Times. Sun Times, yeah. So, I mean, it's, no, if you could go on just a little bit more, because I want you back to talk more about the memorial, and we go in depth on, on the memorial, but tell us a little bit about the memorial. All right, so also a, a big part of the ship is going to be the interior space. Mm -hmm. The interior space, we'll, we will have a discovery center. Our plans now, now are to have um, an aircraft on display inside the the ship mm -hmm. and that aircraft um, hopefully will be one of the aircraft that was brought up from the uh, bottom of Lake Michigan during the training World War II right. training there, was a lot of planes lost. there were like 200 planes that yeah. just went into the drink because it was so diff the the difficulty of landing uh, one of these aircraft on a, a carrier here was very difficult. Um, the, the difficulty level was because out at out at sea, you can you normally will have a nice breeze, yeah. uh, gust of wind that'll help get the plane lifted off the uh, carrier deck. Uh, out on the lake, sometimes those breezes weren't there, so, so it, it, was, it would be dip, it sometimes it was difficult for them to land I think, and to take off. I think I. It was more challenging on the lake to, to delay one of these things than out in the, on the ocean. Uh, one more thing before we close out, and I want you back again, is how many people, the pilots were killed? I, you and I researched this once. I, I can't remember, six, seven? Uh, yeah, there, there were a handful. Now, um, and, and that goes to, to the, um, the level of training yeah. that these guys received, because there were 18,000 who 
who did all of yeah. their training, but through that training, maybe you know less than ten. Yeah. Uh, died died in, the, in the training. Everyone, I want to uh, thank Jeff. Uh, for thank you for having me. I, I want you back to, to continue this conversation. I, I found it very good. I want folks to know about this memorial and this museum that will be coming to Chicago. And with your help and hard work and diligence of everyone on the committee, we will get this. Well, I want everybody to go to our website, yeah. uh, www.chicagonavymemorial.org. Thank you, Jeff. And I close out by saying, as I always say to everyone, if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. Also, uh, God bless America, Semper Fi, and uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff.